So welcome back to the networking fundamentals video part two. In part one, we talked a little bit about the information super highway is sort of an analogy of how networking operates. Now what we're going to do is we're going to shift gears a little bit when we talk specifically about networking devices, which is number three here, and then we'll wrap up. So the first thing is what we call end devices or endpoint. This is essentially a device that is accessing the network and requesting resources. So we have a couple of different things. We have what are called generically called workstations. It can be a laptop, it can be a desktop computer, but it's basically some device we're using to access resources. So for example, if you wanted to print a document, you would hit the print key, it would get sent over the network to the printer. And so the device that would be starting that would be the workstation. Then you have portable devices or mobile devices like tablets and phones and things like that. Then you have what's called an IP phone. It's essentially a device that takes voice conversations, puts them in packets and transmits them across the network. So it's very hardware specific. So endpoints are end devices. Next you have servers. If you've ever gone to a restaurant and you order food, a person that comes and gets your order and brings your food is called a server because they're bringing something to you. And on a network, a server is a device that serves up some kind of resource. Or you may go to a web server where your a web page is being displayed. But in either case, you're requesting a network resource. So that's what servers essentially do. Of the two types, first you have physical servers. This is a piece of hardware. It can be a tower computer, but it could also be a rack mount server. The Cisco UCS C series of servers work that way. And then there are blade servers where you have a chassis and then in each slot is a server by itself. The Cisco UCS B series is an example of that. And there's of course other manufacturers that have it as well. Then you have what are called virtual servers. These are not living on a physical piece of equipment, but living as a virtual container on a physical piece of equipment. So you use something called a hypervisor, which essentially creates these instances and they act very much like if they were just a physical piece of equipment. And as far as operating systems go, whether it's physical or virtual servers, you can install Windows, you can install Unix and Linux, various flavors of that, or you can install a hypervisor that hosts virtual machines. Next thing you need is what's called a network access adapter. So you have your workstation and you want to access the network. You have to have some kind of hardware that allows you to do that. One of the more popular ones is called a NIC or a network interface card. In most cases now it's built into the motherboard of the computer, laptop, or desktop, but it gives you access to the network. Typically it's an RJ45 copper cable that plugs into it, but it goes back to the days where you had adapter cards to computers. You also have wireless adapters, which these can be built into the motherboard. They can be additional components. They could be USB based, but either way it gives you access to the network. And sort of another concept is what's called a modem, which is modulator demodulator. The original usage was you had an analog device that would take digital data, convert it into tones to be sent across the voice network, and then turn back into digital data on the other end. They're not largely used anymore, but sometimes that same term gets applied to other things. Like, for example, my home network setup, I have a cable modem. It's not really a modem. It's an access device. But since it performs the same function, it's sometimes called by that same name. Now we can move into actual intermediary network components. So a switch. Typically in a network, you're going to connect to a switch first. This provides access to the network and also works at layer two and layer three. This will make more sense when we talk about the OSI model later, but it gives you essentially local access. Then you have a router which takes traffic from one IP network and allows it to go to a different IP network. This is typically a device that's used in networking across the internet, for example. A firewall is designed to keep trespassers and unwanted data out. So as we wrap up, just want to talk about a couple of things. Network transports data. It's going taking information from one device and sending it to another device through any one of a number of other devices. Network operation is very analogous to highway travel. So you have an on-ramp, you have an on-ramp, you have the highway, and so forth. Special hardware-based components allow and support network functions, routers, switches, and so forth. Yeah. Understanding networking is really essential to a career in IT. And the Cisco CCDA is essentially the starting point for a lot of people. I got mine in 2000 when I was early into the industry, and it really will launch you in a lot of ways to a successful career in IT. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk again soon.